So you wanna to move to Vancouver, eh? I've been living here for just over six months now and it sucks. Don't come here. Video's done, right? Fine, I'll tell you five things you need to know before you make the biggest mistake of your life. First, let's talk about the greater Vancouver area. Now, as you can see, we got Vancouver here kind of on an island surrounded by some areas that no one really cares about, like Surrey, Richmond, Burnaby, Coquitlam, and New Westminster. Now, these areas are not necessarily a write-off. If you're not rolling in dollar bills every night, or if you're just looking for a more quiet suburb, most of these areas are accessible by SkyTrain and can bring you back to civilization at any time. Now, the city of Vancouver itself is divided into about 57 sub-communities. Sub-communities? Communities. I'm not going to talk about them all in detail here, but if you want to learn more about each of these areas, the link is in the description. In case you're wondering, I live in East Van, particularly near Commercial Broadway Station. It's a good area. It's also known as Little Italy, and the food here is amazing. Finding a place to live. How much does it cost to live in this Canadian paradise, you ask? Well, I'm gonna tell you. A basic uh, one bedroom apartment with more than four walls and running water in the city of Vancouver run you around $2,000 a month. That's a good price. As a comparison in Surrey, you can rent an entire house for that much. So if you're willing to make that 30 to 40 minute transit ride and spend $80 on a bus pass every month, be my guest. Now you may be asking yourself, where is the best place to live in Vancouver? Where's all the action? And to that I say wherever you can find an apartment that is not on East Hastings. Unless you're into watching homeless people. Well then just go for it, be my guest. Now when you're looking for an apartment, the most common place to find these properties is in fact Craigslist. Now I don't think I have to say this, but I do. Be careful when you're talking to people on Craigslist. I, I think that's a given. If they want to deposit before you even see the place, claiming they're out of town and aren't around to show you the place. Don't do it. It's a scam. And honestly, just use your common sense. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. This is a very competitive real estate market out here, so keep your wits about you. Living costs and common expenses can add up fast, so here are some things to keep in mind. Almost all the rentals usually only include hot water. Utilities like lights and heat are on you, like most properties. An average utility bill for about 600 square feet is around 35 bucks, not too crazy. That's something to keep in mind. But in Vancouver, renter's insurance is mandatory because of the risk of earthquakes. To be honest, I haven't felt one since I've been here. Feeding yourself can get expensive if you don't know where to get the deals. Prices will fluctuate on things you like. Save on Foods is probably the cheapest because of their discount membership card that I always forget at home. I literally have like seven of these. Now I recommend going and checking out any local food market in your area. There's tons of them in Vancouver. They usually run all summer long. You'll save a lot of money shopping here and you'll support your local farmers and entrepreneurs in the area. On top of that, you eat healthier. So this is really a way, it's a win-win scenario. And if shit really goes south for you, there's a few food banks in the area that you can visit once per week. I never had to do this myself, thankfully, but I don't judge anybody that has. Transiting on the SkyTrain is tolerable. It is known as the oldest and longest fully automated driverless transit system in the world. But it closes at 1.30 a.m. and opens again at 5 a.m. Which really stunts the nightlife in this city. Now at the time of this recording there isn't any rideshare services like Uber or Lyft in Vancouver. Which is really inconvenient and like so not progressive. If you're coming here from another province in Canada and plan on driving your vehicle here, don't. Take it from me, if you plan on staying here for more than three months, you're gonna have to register your vehicle in this province. And if your vehicle's from out of province, you're gonna have a tough time. We drove our vehicle here from Ontario and just got it safety and certified before we left. But because there were some rust spots and some minor fixes that really didn't need to be fixed. Every mechanic I took it to wanted to charge me more than the car was worth for a safety. Which I had just got in Ontario. I literally had the paper with the date like a month before. Anyways, so ultimately I had to sell a car for pennies uh, and get something out here. If you do decide to get a car here, insurance options are quite limited. Really, all you have is BCAA and auto plan, which is ICBC, or for lack of a better term, the province's insurance. Everyone pretty much uses this uh, auto plan and I pay around $300 a month for my vehicle, so something to consider. But having a car out here is a big plus. A lot of the outdoor stuff in the mountains is not accessible by transit, only certain spots, so it's good to have one. If you do have previous driving experience, bring documentation to prove it. If you have more than two years of driving experience under your belt with a full license, you can save a lot on insurance, so bring that proof. Bring that proof. Some long distance moving options. Now when it comes to moving your stuff out here, I really recommend just selling whatever you can and storing 
all the valuables like with someone or in a unit where you're from. No matter which way you look at it, it's gonna cost a lot of money to move things out here. It's it, depending on where you come from. If you're coming from Ontario, yeah, it's expensive. Ultimately, what we ended up doing was fitting whatever we could into a five by 10 U-Haul box and flying it out here. It was really the best option uh, and the cheapest option and ultimately selling and storing whatever we could rebuy here. So what's the fuss? What makes this place so great? Nothing, don't bother coming here. In all honesty, the weather here in the summer is amazing. A typical summer day, we'll see a high of 25 degrees, clear skies with really low humidity. In the winter, temperatures don't get below zero, but it rains a lot, which in my opinion is kind of a fair trade for a Canadian city. It beats the alternative. <laughs> And let's be honest, Vancouver is situated in the most beautiful province in Canada. So it has a lot to offer its residents when it comes to nature and urban life, which means there's a lot of free things to do. Like visit Granville Island, hang out in Stanley Park, hike the Grouse Grind, mountain bike on the North Shore, hang out at UBC and visit the nude beach, wander around Lynn Canyon, or take a ferry over to Victoria. And that's just to name a few. Really, the outdoor adventures are endless. I also enjoy that this city really promotes a healthy lifestyle. There's a lot of fit people and joggers riding their bikes to work. Vegan and vegetarian restaurants are usually just a stone throw away from each other. Also, compared to metropolises like Toronto, Vancouver's got a relatively low population, which kind of surprised me. Now, there are some downsides to living here. Let's face it, this isn't a perfect city, and I have discovered some dislikes personally since living here. There's no real nightlife, and I think it's because the train stops at 1.30 and ultimately it kills the party. Also, there's a lack of diversity. Now, I'm from a city that at one point was the most diverse city in the world, B-Town. But here in Vancouver, most people are either Asian, white, few Hispanics, and the odd token black guy. Just an observation. Gas prices are way more expensive than the rest of Canada. For whatever reason, gas prices just seem to be really high out here. Really high. Also, it's really hard to make friends. Now, unless you're really good at harassing people, most Vancouverites are quick to make the, to make the plans, but really lack the follow through. Now, it's not just me. I've heard this from countless outsiders who just moved to Vancouver that have the same issue. Whereas in Toronto, people are down or they're not. And they'll tell you that right to your face. There's no reindeer games or unanswered texts for five months. They never text back! But anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you know someone that's moving to Vancouver, share this with them. Ultimately, since living here, this city is definitely an eight out of 10. Uh, it's beautiful to wake up to these mountains every morning and breathe this amazing. It's so weird to say. I'm still discovering new things about the city every day. I am no master about living in Vancouver. This is just what I've experienced in the past six months. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, baby, don't you, don't you, don't